Hey YouTube, welcome to this installment of the Avion blog. So what we've got in store for you today is going to be rather quick, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at a Fluke Intellitone 200 toner and probe set. We're also going to be taking a look at a 120 degree sector antenna, 5 gigahertz sector antenna from uh, Microtech, and uh, we're just going to have a quick look at them, how they mount, etc., and how they get used in the field. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It is a rather quick sort of um, video. It's not very in-depth, but um, yeah, it, it, it'll go into the basic details of the stuff. Um, then something else we're going to take a look at is this little guy over here. Uh, I was asked a question the other day, how can I power a 24-volt PoE type system on a 12-volt gel cell battery, for example, for micro backup? And this is the answer, yes. So we're going to take a look at this on the bench and uh, you guys can decide from there what you think. Let's get straight to it and get straight into the episode. Right, so welcome to this review of the Fluke Networks Intellitone Pro 200 Land Toner and the Intellitone Pro 200 Pro. Now this is uh, what I believe the mid-range uh, uh, Fluke Probe Tone, Tone and Probe, whatever you want to call it, um, set. And uh, I use this fairly often um, out in the field but I do find some of my Chinese devices do work easier and they're also a little bit cheaper for general use so I don't always make use of this set but uh, this set is still very useful to have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the basic test functionality on this set. I know we've done this before but we're going to go a little bit more in depth now. So the simple way of doing a test we've got a little cable. We want to test this a piece of CAT6 UTP patch cable. You basically slot it into the toner. Now bearing in mind we're doing a cable test to see if the cable is working properly. Let me give us a little bit more room in here. And there you have it. Right, so you're going to run this down to cable map. Then this one here, you would rotate it to on and then you can watch your five six seven eight just like that you can see that it is working well you can turn this up see now it's telling me sync and connections so this cable is good now a few other things that can be done yeah using the pretty much the same setup. Now if we disconnect obviously you won't get any signal. But you could go to digital. Okay. As you can see no signal and as I come down you start getting signal. Now, the LEDs operate as a signal strength meter and the tone is there for you as well for finding the cable. Now, that is the digital mode. Now, you've got two modes. You've got wide. So, this will kind of give you an idea if you're in the same sort of room. Okay. And then that is the more sensitive one. Okay. Then you've got the analog which case you're going to switch this to analog and then you can actually hear the speaker and anyway this is this is more for like individual cable tracing a lot more for individual cable tracing than it is for finding things. So yeah, that's more the analog side and um, how to do analog cable tracing. You would use that function. There you go. So you can use that for tracing out pairs inside here, etc. I've already shown you the cable map. Now I'm going to switch this device off and show you some of the bare functionality of this device here on its own. So I've shown you guys the mapping functions. We also have an impedance function or resistance function and we have a service function whereas if you go to the service function and we let's say for example 
we bring in some data cable. Let me just do that quickly. Right, I'm just jacking a cable into my primary switch next to me over here. And I'm bringing this cable, which is now hot, with um, cable with signal. It's a standard cat 5E. And you jack it in here. You can actually see a status light happening over here. And of course, your switch will become active. see there we've got activity flashing so that's just telling me that that is active network when you unplug again gone so both ends of the cable now so yeah that just shows you that your network is active now this specific device does not trace out um, let's say uh, where cable faults are, whatever the case may be. But what it does do is give us a broad stream tool for tracing and testing Cat5 cable. I'm just testing that same green cable now, plugged it in on both ends. As you can see, everything's fine. So, happy days. Now that we have a slightly better idea of how this device works, we can um, obviously make use of it a little bit more out in the field. Now, with this device, I recommend getting yourself a couple of these jumper cables. Either make them. It does come with sort of this type here, yeah, flat cable. I've made two or three extra ones. Um, and then, of course, if you're doing individual pair tracing, you have these. Uh, these simply just connect in at the top over here, like so. And then you can attach these clips to whichever wires you're trying to trace and you're good to go so yeah that's it for the Fluke and Teletone Pro 200 toner and Pro very very nice piece of kit um, like I said I do use it from time to time but um, probably not my favorite favorite but uh, still a nice piece of kit to have and if you take your work seriously then uh, Fluke if you know anything about electronics test meters Fluke are one of the best in the market so Right, so here we have the router board, MAND 15S. Um, this is a 5 GHz, 120 degree sector antenna. Uh, we don't have much information on here. Uh, box isn't very labeled, but it does have Macrotech, Macrotech router board, MAND 15S. So let's slide the box open and take a look. So inside we have the mounting bracket for the antenna and the antenna itself. So we're going to take this antenna out. We do have some documentation over here, but uh, not very important. So we're going to take this antenna out. Well, we may as well take the bracket out as well. Get this box out of the way. And we can take a look. Okay, so this is the bracket. Now what happens is this has got quite nice little angled um, degree sort of compasses, whatever you want to call them. This would mount onto the pole or onto the wall and then you can of course set your um, your angles etc for your antenna uh, to get the best signal. Now the actual antenna itself is not very big. This is the back now. That's the front, this being the bottom, this being the top. And have a look, we've got some information over here. And over here you have a thumb screw, which you can also tighten and loosen with an Allen key. And then this slides down and lifts up. And then inside there you have an earth nut, and you have your vertical and horizontal antenna connectors over here. If you remove them, you can see your connections in there. Uh, both of them are the same. Have a very close look. And that's pretty much the entirety of 
the connection of this antenna. So you would run your coax into there, connect into those points over there, and close this up for waterproofing. Probably tighten it up with the Allen key on site. Uh, it looks like we've got some drain holes at the bottom over here, which are there just in case I think water gets in. And then over here, you have the mounting system. Now, this antenna bracket can be fitted, and then you can just simply slide it down. And it's got a clip, and it clips into place. And then there you would have your sector antenna mounted onto the pole, etc. You can adjust your angles downward, whatever area you want to cover, etc. Now, like I said, this is a 120 degree sector antenna. It's um, a nice angle for what we like to use because you can get to uh, sort of wider area by using three or four of these. You can pretty much cover a 360 degree in area. You could do it with three, uh, being 120 degrees, but you're going to have dead zones because your, your antennas are literally just edging out and then ballooning out. You're going to have a dead spot in the center, etc. So it's always better to have possibly four of these uh, just to give you slightly better coverage and to do an overlap on the sectors so yeah that's pretty much it there's not much to talk about on this antenna um, we're going to connect this antenna to a base box 5 a microtech base box 5 um, and use that as one of the uh, sort of sectors for the bluff high site so i'll make a video about that when we do that but um, yeah thanks for the quick unwatching of the unboxing well sorry not unwatching thanks for the watching of the quick unboxing of the microtech 5 gigahertz 120 degree sector antenna and uh, when we install it, like I say, I'll make another video of the whole installation process and the testing, etc. Just so you guys know what I'm talking about, this is the Ruder Board Microtech Base Box 5. Um, this is an older one, but it still works. Basically, you connect the antenna to those two channels. There we go. Using an RF fly lead. And then um, you would connect. ETH0 to a PoE adapter and then of course to your controlling system or to internet or to whatever you could actually use this as a standalone unit but um, we don't we have uh, other microtechs which basically run the sites so we use these as high powered APs etc for the high sites so yeah this will, one of these will be bundled with that uh, 120 degree sector and that will be a sector <laughs> or an area Simple, easy, no problems at all. Hey everyone. So a solution that I thought of is using one of these boost converters um, or switch mode power supplies to power a 24, 38, 48 volt, uh, whatever you need, a PoE from a 12 volt battery. So I just want to show you guys the basics of how it works over here. If we were to measure the input over here, you would see exactly 11.9 volts going into this device okay so we got 11.9 volts coming in and right now on the outgoing side we have 19 volts right so let's say for example we needed a nice higher voltage I'm just grabbing a trimmer here Okay, so now you can connect on, and then you can adjust on the adjustment screw if this trimmer was working. Let me just grab another one. Okay, well, no trimmer, but it's okay. It's not a variable capacitor, so it's not world ending. Let's put it that way. So let's go here now. We've got our 19 volts. Just a variable capacitor to see what we can get to. Now remember we've got our 12 volts or 11.9 in, and then we've got our 24 volts. There we've got 30 volts, which some of the PoE adapters do run to. And uh, we're maxing out at around 34 volts DC which is enough for PoE applications in some circumstances well in most so 
input twelve volts, eleven point nine output thirty four volts. Now these devices are not expensive, they're a couple of bucks and you can use them to power your PAE. They'll do three and a half amps. Uh, let's call it two and a half amps without much more heat sinking. So they can be installed in a small casing or something like that and used to power a uh, like a base box 5 or something like that of a 12 volt battery. Although the base box 5 will run on a 12 volt battery. Um, one of the other devices that needs more voltage basically like 24 volts PAE you could use one of these to step your 12 volts up to that. Um, don't think of trying to use a 9 volt with these because I think the specific model um, will only take around 10 volts minimum in to give you an output that's anything unusable. Now these devices you can get from us here at Evion. Uh, we can either make them up for you customized or you can purchase a batch lot of them and we'll uh, get them in for you. Already made, put together and you can just basically use them out in the field. So yeah, that's pretty much it from this um, quick, quick, quick video, quick, quick, quick take on these uh, boost converters um, and how they work. So if you guys have any questions, you may comment below and I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching. And just to show you a slightly closer look at these, this is the device. Here you have your input and then you've got your output and here's your adjustment pot. Quite simple. Nothing fancy on them, and they just get the job done. It can also be used for charging laptops in the car, by the way. Okay guys, so that pretty much covers uh, this episode. As you can see, those 5 GHz sectors are really nice antennas. We do use them quite a bit out in the field. And then, uh, of course, this little fella over here. This little fella right here is basically um, a boost converter. A switch mode power supply whatever you want to call it and um, if you guys want to get any your hands on any of these drop us an email on the contacts below this video and we'll be sure to send either information through to you or your device so thanks for watching everybody until next time take care